Hey, what's going on, friends and family? My name is Skylint, and I've been watching a lot of MMO videos. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I've just been in the mood to check out, uh, you know, what's out there. Uh, you know, which ones I want to buy into. I do have the Patreon money coming in. It's not much, but it does help pay for games and pay for the video editing. So let's get some work done, right? But um, yeah, I was looking at this this new wave of these uh, these new classical MMOs. I saw a lot of uh, my peers got invited to play Pantheon, Rise of the Fallen, which I got to play it. Uh, a lot of people are playing Grand Scria and a few of these others. And so I wanted to see videos on these to see if it's worth me even buying into them to cover them. Do you guys even want that sort of coverage? Do you guys remember when I used to be really critical about games? Yeah, I want to jump back into it. I feel like this new wave of, well, this new retro wave of MMOs would be a pretty good start. But I decided to begin with one important aspect of gameplay that isn't gameplay. In fact, I haven't played these games, or at least most of them that I'm talking about right here. I have not touched them. I have only watched video of them. And that is specifically what I am talking about today. I am judging the book by the cover, and I think that's something that's really important. Now, we've talked about that a few times in a few rants, got a, some pretty good viewage, and you guys mostly agree with me that a lot of MMOs look really bad. Now, there's a split definition here um, of, of like what what is like good graphics, you know, fidelity or art style. I think we can mostly agree that most of these new retro games look like with both definitions pretty bad. Not always, but then you have uh, two different kind of people. Does it even matter if they look bad? And then we have people like me. <laughs> Very few of us who actually know uh, really what we're seeing on screen and how that might translate to gameplay. And I'm specifically going to be talking about one big issue that I think designers have, especially because they're veteran older designers, especially people who probably come from Dungeons and Dragons design, which then translated into the original MMOs and then is now being rebirthed. But it looks like they're making a big mistake, in my opinion, with the cores of their gameplays. Yeah, two minutes in, we're finally going to talk about it. Okay, I think the biggest issue facing these games is not really the graphics, not the fidelity, not even the art style. In fact, RuneScape is doing pretty fucking fantastic. But my issue with this games, uh, the, the, this idea of how these games are coming about, is if you noticed, all these games are very class oriented, and to an extent, you're gonna see a lot of combat. There's a, there's a big focus on combat. But if you look at the video in real time, the animations, you, you see the gameplay in real time. I mean, just, just watching it, just watching streamers, just watching the video, it's very self-evident that it's very static. Now, gameplay is not exactly all you see your character doing. Uh, as an example, RuneScape, a lot of the gameplay is the planning, is the strategy. There is a lot going on with RuneScape in terms of micro mechanics that you might not quite realize. Yes, you click and you stand still and it's very high, well, low tick rate and very high annoyance because of that. Um, it's a very high patience game. And yet there's actually a lot going on with the RuneScape. And I think it's to an extent justifiable because it's art style is more diorama based and the gameplay is more macro level versus micro level. But then you play these games, this new age of game, which is kind of going back to basics, uh, this retro wave of new classical MMO. And you see that they are focused on micro mechanics with these micro little spells. One reason why RuneScape 3 didn't do so great. These micro little spells and everything without having the actual micro mechanics a little tiny, like actual playable elements of movement mechanics, uh, like in World of Warcraft. You know, when World of Warcraft switched to its more actiony based time target system, that changed everything. We saw PvP blow up and a lot of other of the older PvP MMOs either focus on macro style gameplay like Ultima or micro style, uh, where you're like jumping around and there's even like some pseudo physics based interaction that you can kind of, I don't know, glitch out and a lot of ridiculous stuff. Um, and, and people love those games, you know, we, we love those little tiny animation cancels and things like that. And World of Warcraft had that. When World of Warcraft came out, it really was quite revolutionary for a massively multiplayer online game. So now we have these new games that are very standstill. Now, I actually don't have anything wrong with standstill. Again, RuneScape, I put in top tens all the time. In fact, I play Albion Online, which is a point and click game, and a lot of us play League of Legends. But we know that isn't quite standstill, is it? So even, even if it is truly standstill, I don't have a problem with that. I've played turn-based RPGs my whole life. My issue is now going to go into the class design. So if you're not gonna focus on macro play, which to an extent some of these do, but if you're not gonna focus on that and you're gonna have all these micro mechanics and rotations and things, um, okay, maybe that can work for a few classes. So in World of Warcraft, that's going to be something like the mage and the warlock and to an extent the priest. And even those classes, 
do have elements of mobility to them or they do have things that you do that you you know because of the raid design you do have to position there's positionals and things like that uh and to an extent it debatably even final fantasy 14 though actually i heavily criticize that game's combat but these games if they're made from mmo veterans should know the pitfalls of why some people don't like final fantasy 14 why some people don't like playing certain classes in certain mmos and it's very strange that they designed i think every single class like as if it was a spellcaster so sure, you can have a standstill mage that focuses on rotations and, you know, they play a certain way. Sure, but w what? You're going to have a rogue be a standstill class without, I mean, like, okay, they have to position behind, but the, the mobs themselves are standstill. There's not really any sort of AoEs to run out. It's not like Wildstar, Guild Wars 2, or Terra, which are more action-packed games, but, like, you could have those in standstill games. In fact, RuneScape put those in now. RuneScape has been, you know, has actually created something very engaging, even though its evolution of combat hasn't. Uh, overall, the counter to that, half a combat, is enemies, of course. So yeah, okay, fine. If everything's gonna be standstill and everything's gonna be, you know, it's gonna take a long time to do combos and things like that, it's all very strategic and tactical, well, give us tactics to react to, because I'm watching all this gameplay, and it's basically just everyone staring at their UI, you know, looking for debuffs to spell off, uh, looking to keep up dots, you know, things like that, which I consider very boring. Okay, but maybe, maybe somebody really enjoys that type of gameplay. It is very, you know, analytical. Okay, you can play your whack-a-mole on your priest, on your mage, but then like, please give me a proper warrior. Please give me my paladin that I could just jump in and face off. You know, give me those, give me those classes and gameplay, which you, you say you have in these games. You say you have an assassin. What do I think of an assassin? I think like Rogue, World of Warcraft. I'm definitely thinking, you know, like basically a Guild Wars 2 thief is hella hype. I'm thinking all that kind of stuff. Uh, in those games, they do it great. And then in this these games, it's like everything is, is designed as if it's a different flavor of mage. Okay, we ha the assassin is essentially, mechanically speaking, just like any other MMO, uh, a mage. It just has a dagger and you're using dagger skills and poisons but like you're standing still essentially you have to get behind them but other than that you mechanically are as a player it's gonna feel very homogenous compared to i don't know something like guild wars 2 which okay well you know counter to that guild wars 2 actually has a bad issue and a lot of these uh, i would say like more action-based or pure action-based mmos actually do have an issue where they don't have role diversity that great or like even the healers and stuff are DPS, or they, they basically play like the DPS. So you can definitely have the counter to that problem, but I'm specifically talking about this new wave of MMO, supposedly being designed by veterans. They're not trying to revolutionize any other mechanics, and the focus is purely on combat, um, which seemingly, seemingly from the videos and things, these games, while they might be social based, they might be crafting and things, combat is obviously the meat and taters, and that's what you're gonna be doing most, probably. And it's rather, it's just lackluster. It looks lackluster because like it is, it's all, like everyone is just standing still all around, you know, an enemy, a mob. You can say you do that in stuff like Albion. You do that in stuff like Final Fantasy 14. You do that in stuff in this game and that game and that game. But those games have extra elements. Even Final Fantasy 14, which I said I would heavily criticize, turns out, it's dungeons, it's bosses, just from watching streams, which yeah, I actually very much enjoy. It's like the only MMO I actually watch streams of. It looks fucking awesome. You know, the, the, the positionals, the movement is really cool. The, the necessity out of that, and we all can agree, Final Fantasy XIV's base combat, if it was in any other MMO, would probably be garbage, but it's not. The entire game, or the, you know, the rating system is designed around that combat system. And I don't think these veteran MMO developers are really on board with that concept. They're building out a giant world and they're filling it with lore and all these, you know, these little mechanics that they think fit in an RPG or an MMO. But when it comes to actual gameplay and actual game feel, which is rich coming from somebody who hasn't played these games and is just watching it. But I am making, probably talking out of my ass, but making the assumption that it's all rather similar. There is no way you're going to change around rotational gameplay to such an extent that all these classes genuinely feel different. You basically have a few archetypes of rotational gameplay, and World of Warcraft does all of it debatably the best, and otherwise you have Final Fantasy XIV, and then you have these other games that do totally radically different systems. So, you know, we have like Ashes of Creation, which is following more of an Elder Scrolls or a Guild Wars type of gameplay uh, and rotational gameplay. Uh, you know, we have these other games that are full action combat like Terra, which uses combos, Black Desert Online, and Blade and Soul. But in this particular archetype, which is supposed to be more slower paced, more strategic, why? 
when you could have so many cool elements and, and, and gameplay experiences, did you design every single class as if it was a spellcaster? My opinion is because they are old designers. They have old, outdated inspirations. In D&D, when you're playing in that, the tabletop RPG, technically, mechanically, uh, well, there is no mechanics. You just have spells. You're all casting different spells with different flavors. And in game, if you're not gonna go completely bonkers and ridiculous with your spells, which none of these games do, debatably Project Gorgon seems like it, maybe. That's the one game that might get a pass. But all these games aren't giving you truly the freedom that you want in a spell casting class. If I'm gonna be a thief or rogue, then give me abilities that can see traps. Oh, but you have to design traps and dungeons around that will make traps deadly then. That's a little bit harder, isn't it? Oh, you're just gonna give us usual backstabs and poisons? See, that's what I'm talking about. In my opinion, just that face value, like basically kind of translating the video footage into a game design document, I think that this is bad design. Now the games as a whole might be something, but face value, these games, to most people, are gonna look like garbage. And in the end, that's gonna mean something when you're selling these games, when they get out there, and I'm kinda scared, because I want these games to, to exist. I'm actually doing top lists with these games. I'm gonna be playing them. But at the moment, even someone like me, who I, I can make money playing these games, I'm a little bit hesitant to actually jump in. So guys, what do you guys think in the comments below? Uh, what are your favorite classes in MMOs actually? You know, what, what MMO has like the most fun combat? And out of that, you know, what class is the best? Let me know. Um, I think Guild Wars 2 does Mesmer amazing. I think World of Warcraft, the Death Knight, oh, actually, yeah, no, Death Knight's actually pretty hype. Uh, Unstoppable Force there. And, um, you know, a lot of other games, they do different things better. They have different classes that they probably do better archetypes of. Um, I would love to know if you guys wanted to see a top 10 or something on, you know, the best classes in MMO. Um, that'd be fun, I think. Anyways, a lot of questions. Let me know the answers in the comments below. And of course, your thoughts and feelings on everything I said in this video. Keep the hype alive, guys. And I'll see you again next time.